Hi, I'm Lisa Lynch, Holistic Happiness Guide. I'm reading from the Red String book, The Power of Protection, Technology for the Soul. It's what they consider Kabbalah. Kabbalah is more of a, a resource, a technology, uh, an ancient, ancient wisdom uh, that can be used to answer everyday life questions. Like, why am I here? It uh, has been speaking. I'm uh, half a little bit toward the middle. It's, uh, I've been reading little pages at a time from it. It is talking about why we came here. It speaks of coming from a different reality, uh, endless world reality more authentic than this reality. It speaks about where we had bliss and joy endlessly given to us. We decided to ask the Creator to please, please let us help create bliss and joy and uh, bring us into a reality where it's chaos and darkness like a game of hide and seek. We want to find, we want to seek. We want the thrill of looking for bliss and joy. We found that the ego is, uh, we found that our, our light, our uh, light source is hidden. Uh, he, decided, uh, he decided to cover our light source and connection back to him. With a curtain. Uh, curtain uh, has dimmed our, has darkened, it hasn't dimmed our light, it has darkened the light of our uh, life and we don't know, we don't know where it is. We don't, we don't know how to find it because it's dark. Now, the, take the curtain off, the light's still shining, it never stops shining and that, that light is within us and it is still shining and we just need to find the curtain so we can take it off. It went on to talk about the curtain being made of fabric. Say, uh, uh, the curtain is uh, made of the ego. Our ego uh, is a fabric and it tends to basically have negative thoughts and emotions that make us react negatively. Uh, jealousy was the <laughs> biggest one that it spoke of. Uh, anxiety, um, resentment, pessimism, just anything negative uh, that when it went on to speak that when we can deal with the ne negativity, uh, deal with it as in letting it go, uh, first identify when we're in a situation, oh, I'm coming from negativity, hmm, acknowledge that, identify the negative aspects from when you're speaking or acting or thinking and uh, let it go. Somehow, let it go. Like, it doesn't serve you, so let it go. I need more work with that. I don't know how to do that. And, and I find this very intriguing. So, let it go. The more we can let it go, the lighter, thinner that fabric is over our light. And the you know brighter it starts to get, so we can start to see maybe where that light source and curtain is, so we can take curtain off. And uh, I said conversely as well, uh, as, as we come in and act and live, when we come from the negative uh, aspects in life, we add more layers to the fabric of the curtain. And it gets even darker and more chaos and chaotic. So um, the Kabbalah ancient wisdom is about the light source, uh, source of energy that we have within us. It's hidden. The ego, with its negative talk, keeps it covered. When we can acknowledge when we're in negativity and let it go, when we can let negativity go for life, then the light, uh, the fabric gets lighter and our light shines brighter. Today, so that's the summary up till now. Today is the power of annoyances. 
the little red string book speaks of the power of annoyances. Uh, hopefully by now you're beginning to realize why your life is filled with irritating people and annoying problems. <laughs> Sorry. Is it not? Um, okay. It's because annoyances are a good thing. They trigger your ego so you can stop your reaction and eradicate these traits from your nature. All obstacles, both large and small, are really opportunities to find light. But here's the conundrum. I just need to sit in that for a moment. All obstacles are for you to find light. All annoyances and irritating people are for you to find the light source. Here's the conundrum. You've been programmed and conditioned all your life to despise obstacles and to steer clear of problems, never realizing what they really offer you. As a result, you focus your attention on your positive traits and you completely ignore, constantly deny, or remain in the dark when it comes to your egocentric qualities. If I'm such a good person, you ask, why did all this chaos suddenly befall me? Well, now you know the answer. <laughs> I don't know if I have that many people in my life that think that I'm such a good person. Why did all this? Well, you know. Isn't that just crazy? Annoyances, irritating people are all opportunities to find the light. I don't want to say what I was just thinking. So the greatest trick the devil ego did was convincing the world he didn't exist. Wonder where this is going to go. You did not come into this world to be rewarded or honored for your good traits. To the contrary, you came into this world to find the light hiding behind your unpleasant traits. Sorry, so now that's reminding me of all the shadow work people speak of. I've been doing shadow work. I've been looking at my shadow. This right here. Find the light hiding behind your unpleasant traits. But as previously stated, the ego is so effective at hiding the truth, you don't even recognize the truth of its existence or role it plays in causing you so much pain and suffering. Yeah, if we just live in the pain and we just suffer, we, 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 we get nowhere. We have to look beyond the pain, so we have to find what's behind it. We have to learn from our pain and suffering, yeah. And that that I picked up in, in Buddhism, the Four Noble Truths, Eightfold Path. Um, so the good news is that this book has just opened your eyes to what really matters in life. Here it is, it's in italics again. The changing of your character. The changing of your character is what really matters in life. Okay. However, the journey to transformation is a difficult one. <laughs> right? That, yeah. It's a difficult one. That's why the Kabbalists gave you a few tools to help us navigate the world of chaos and facilitate the overthrow of the ego. That sounds like some hope right there. Maybe this little red book is going to give us some tools on how to navigate the world of chaos that we ask to come into and how to help facilitate the overthrow of our ego. But yet the next thing says dangerous openings. Sounds a little contraire. Okay, I was looking for some tools. Here it says, so um, one, of the, one of the tools concerns protection from what is known as the evil eye. We've heard of that. 
you probably noticed that the most common and most dangerous trait on the list mentioned earlier is jealousy. Um, we, we, we noticed it because it was mentioned six times. But anywho, when you react with this trait, you create a curtain. But jealousy has an additional side effect and one that is uniquely unpleasant. Not only do you create more of a curtain, but you also create an opening. You create an opening for the jealous looks and envious stares that often arise from your enemies and even from your friends. And that's an enormous problem. And then there's a little quote here. A person possessed of an evil eye carries with him the eye of the destroying negative force. Hence, such a person is called a destroyer of the world. People should be on their guard against such a person and not come near them so that they should not be injured by them. The Zohar. Okay. Wow. It's going to speak of the evil eye. Yet it was called a tool. One of the tools concerns protection from the evil eye. Okay, so a tool for protection from the evil eye. It's going to speak a little bit about the evil eye right now. <laughs> if looks could kill an icy stare, a murderous glance, a wicked glare, right? Throughout human history, the eyes have been linked to all kinds of spiteful behavior and ill effects, often referred to as the evil eye. Upon hearing this term for the first time, many people react to it as if it were something from the dark ages, like witchcraft, sorcery. In fact, the concept of the evil eye is not only modern, it's realistic and profound. All right, this book is saying, in fact, the concept of the evil eye is not only modern, it's realistic and profound. It refers to the power of negative energy that constantly circulates in everyday life. Specifically, the evil eye is a code name for Envy. Ha. Jealousy and envy. I was just saying how jealousy was one of the greatest negative aspects of the ego. The evil eye is a code name for envy. That which ignites feelings of anger and resentment in so many people when they are confronted with another person's success or good fortune. This can take place either consciously or subconsciously. They, people may not know that they're having these envious thoughts and feelings. The evil eye refers to the visual stream that flows from a person's eye as a result of a That's a hard word to say. Covetous? Covetous? Anyways, from a stare or a resentful glance accompanying well-intended or ill-intentioned words of praise. So people can, can say good or bad, but it's just kind of that, that stare and it stream energy that comes from it. You may not realize it, but envious eyes and jealous eyes have a tangible effect on your life and well-being. They can hold you back from achieving your full potential in every area of your life. So we need to be careful of evil eyes. Uh, we, we don't want anybody to be too envious or jealous of us. And um, either one of those two. 
you know, can hold you back. If anyone looks at you with those evil eyes, a visual stream that flows from a person's eye as a result of a stare, resentful glance, envy, jealousy, can hold you back from achieving your full potential in every area of your life. Do we need to get into the history of the evil eye? Whew, I just want to know how to protect myself from it. In Italy, it's called Maloccio. Kabbalists refer to it as Ayin Hore. Arabs pronounce it as Ayin Harsha. I'm not pronouncing any of them very well. The Scottish know it as Drexkulon, and the Romans dubbed it as Oculus Malus. <laughs> Bad eye. All right. Whenever I didn't mean to touch third eye, because the third eye, I'm sorry, third eye, Oculus eye. Whatever you choose to call it, whatever you choose to call it, the concept of the evil eye goes back thousands of years. The evil eye is mentioned in the Bible and is phenomenon acknowledged. It's phenomenon acknowledged by Muslims, Jews, and Christians. The giants of Greek philosophy, Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, spoke of it as well. Moses wrote about it. Kings, queens, presidents devised strategies to guard their nations against it. Evil eye. All the leaders knew about it. In fact, eye makeup originated in India as a tool. Eye makeup originated in India as a tool to shield people from the negative visual stream caused by the evil eye. In ancient Egypt, eyeshadow and lipstick were worn for the same purpose, to reflect away negative glances and envious stares. The Greeks often painted an eye near the bow of their battleships to ward off the evil eye. And ancient warriors once adorned their helmets and shields with flashy ornaments to neutralize evil forces emanating from the eyes of the opposing enemy. Now the effects of the evil eye continues. The need to confront the negative influence of the evil eye should never be underestimated. Make no mistake, your ego eye will pipe in and tell you it's all superstitious. But anyone who doesn't understand the evil eye's effects and fall, fails to activate a protective shield against it, will eventually become its victim. You'll begin to experience medical problems such as backaches, colds, flu. You'll start having problems with your business or a brutal fight in a relationship. The evil eye is a contributing factor to these and host of other maladies. In fact, history's greatest spiritual sages and religious authorities attributed a majority of deaths to the evil eye. And all those tiny currents of doubt circulating in your mind right now exist only because your ego is a master at hiding spiritual truths from your conscious mind. Words like myth, fairy tale, fallacy are all born of ego. You can be sure of this. Negative feelings are everywhere. You may not realize it. But often, even the people who have envious feelings are not consciously aware of them. But that doesn't make those feelings any less destructive. In fact, the camouflaged nature of the evil eye is one of the most dangerous attributes, not only for the targets of env envious feelings, but also for the individuals in whom those targets arise. See, in short, the evil eye is a real danger with which you must contend in your everyday life. And the teachings of the great Kabbalists have always emphasized this. A verse in Kabbalah meditation even refers explicitly to the dangers possessed by jealousy and envy. Let it be your will that you shall not save me from an evil eye. A verse in Kabbalah, Kabbalistic meditation refers explicitly to the danger and it says 
Let it be your will that you shall not, let it be your will that you shall save me from an evil eye. Let it be your will that you shall save me from an evil eye. May we all help each other be saved from an evil eye. Wow. The red string book and the evil eye. More to come. <laughs>